Hi friends, Mark of Bear Hobbies, welcome back to the channel. Are you having major airbrush woes? Is it not working for you? Has something gone drastically wrong? No matter what you're cleaning, it could be your seals. I'm going to show you how in this video to replace your seals and repair your airbrush in a cost effective manner. Stay tuned. <music> Okay gents, so we are talking about the Revolution TR1 series from Iwata. This video is not about cleaning. You can see many, many basic cleaning and stripped down videos. In fact, we're not even going to be removing the nozzle or the actual nozzle cap protector because we're looking at parts basically from this end on and as you can see the airbrush has been stripped down really to nearly every single component so this is much beyond what you would ever do for any cleaning purposes the, for cleaning purposes it's not necessarily stripped down this far what we've done this for is purely for the long-term maintenance and replacement of parts in this airbrush and the reason we're doing that is to save ourselves a lot of money because if this is sent to an official Awata repair center it's going to cost you know quite a few dollars for them to do the strip down and repair however it's not really that complex it can be done yourself so what I've laid out for you are the tools you may need something like a Leatherman to release some of the parts. You're going to need a screwdriver, a, a long screwdriver with a Phillips type head. You're going to need a very small jeweler's type blade screwdriver. And you're probably going to need a pair of forceps as well for removing these parts. Now just a little bit of background. This airbrush, it's on 12 years of service and this has been my absolute workhorse. It has done hundreds of models, I would say, in that period. And during that lifespan, during that 12, 13 years, it has been spraying mainly lacquer type paints been using leveling thinner to Myers, mr color basically really what's been shot through there a few primers and bits and pieces thrown a few pigments through here as well and some enamels and some oils so it, it's done its fair share and during that 12 13 years the only parts that i've had to replace were a needle that I bent through misuse and I had a nozzle split on me one time as well so that was it 12 13 years then about eight months ago actually a lot longer than that what I found was when I was going to use this brush for spraying I had the paint cup loaded up I pulled back the trigger I actually got spray out through the nozzle as normal however paint fed back ran through here and ran down the trigger so paint was flowing backwards and it wasn't a blockage it was nothing to do with that it was something else so it's something a lot more major than that now what helps you in a strip down like this is i want to have got the full exploded diagrams of all the parts and what we're talking about here is seal replacement we're looking at not the air seal components but we're looking at the needle packing and i'm just going to go through i'll just explain a few a few parts um, you know that really the strip down itself i haven't shown you that but we'll go through the reassembly 
all these components very straightforward they do come apart fairly easily when you get to this part 29 which is the slide cam I found mine was quite well embedded and I needed to use some release agent some WD-40 to get this fully out of the body of the airbrush and just as an aside you know there's a lot of questions about what what's the difference between a $15 Chinese airbrush and you know a more high-end airbrush this is not a high not a really high-end airbrush it's sort of mid-range I would call it um, a, the revolution series however it really comes down to the machinery and the precision of these parts bearing in mind that an airbrush is simply a needle moving through a nozzle what's most important is the actual control and finesse you have so you need fine engineered components like such as the needle and the nozzle but it's to actually finally control because I mean we're moving through I don't know tens of thousands of an inch really for precision control or fractions of a millimeter and with precise components that are you know well machined out of good materials you have tighter tolerances and the parts move smoothly so you have better control so that's really you know one of the things that makes these airbrushes more expensive now what we're going to be replacing is as i said two components it's the needle packing which is this component here I'm just going to illustrate it here this component and also 7a it labels these together but they're the valve packing the valve packing o-ring and what it doesn't mention also is a ptfe o-ring as well that's inside there ptfe so that's this assembly inside here and all we need to do is take a crosshead or phillips head screwdriver and start to unscrew it from the body they're not screwed in really tight they come out and then inside here is where you're going to find the ptfe ring and to take that out we're going to use we're going to sort of dig it out with a pair of pliers Okay, it's starting to come out now. Let me just get hold of the thing. There it goes. Okay. So let's have a look at this PTFE ring. Bearing in mind it's been in there. Like 13... 13 years yeah and I can see it's quite it's quite worn it's quite worn and there's a good amount of wear I might show you this underneath the macro I should show you how it looks and then the o-ring sits inside that needle packing screw just inside here and that should come out fairly easily which it does and again I can see it is quite worn it is quite a worn o-ring so I already ordered my spares of course I've gone to the genuine 
I want the replacement parts. I didn't even bother to look for anything other than really what this airbrush deserves, which is the correct parts. So we've got the needle packing O-ring. This was, uh, I think they were about five or six pounds each, sort of seven or eight dollars or something each. We're saving ourselves money because we're doing this operation ourselves. And as you can see, it's quite straightforward. So we'll start off with the PTFE ring. Open that up. Okay, and then all that needs to do, all that needs to do is sit within the body of the airbrush, like so. Don't need to really pack it down because the screw will hold it in place. So that's one component replaced. And then the other one, and you get two O-rings, but you only need one. So we have got a spare. I just take some of the that PTFE ring. It's PTFE to be resistant against solvents. And I can see straight away the this ring is in a much better shape. It actually, yeah, I can see this is probably the best comparison I can give. Let's see if I can show this to you somehow. Put them side by side. And you can see the amount of wear against the old and the new. If we can get that up there. Might have to put this in the Mac. I could probably show you the old one, but the, the old one, it's actually a larger sort of diameter so it's probably that's where I'm guessing the paint was flowing back against and you can yeah I can see how much more worn that is so PTFE ring was a bit worn but this this packing like this packing o-ring was the really the component that was the most worn and that just sits inside there and all we need to do is screw this back inside so I'm going to start by placing it here just sits there and then just gently screw it back inside very important not to over tighten this component and I think it is adjustable to some extent but there we are just a little bit tight that's all we need to do so that's the components replaced and we're going to do the reassembly just um, point out some things did have this little dish here to look after the very small screws actually that make sure we don't lose them so the first component is this cam you're going to notice that it has got this shape to it against that this is how the trigger what it works against to slide this back this cam And I believe, I think this is where most of the airflow happens here because this is where it sits underneath the air valve and allows the air forward, closes off. And then as you pull back, you get more and more air out of the, out of the airbrush. So this slots through like so. There she goes. Just use a bit of force, push it in, and then push her home, and there she goes. Now, I said this wasn't cleaning, but probably 
at this point you probably would clean off all these components because you're not going to strip it down to this extent now the next part to be reassembled is the trigger itself and the trigger is held in just by one screw and only one side of the trigger actually has threading on it so this simply this bar goes through one side and then gets screwed across into the threaded side. Again, you don't need to over tighten any of these components. They're finally machined. And that's the action that we're talking about there. Okay, so let's start putting together all the spring guides, etc. And the next part to go in is actually a spring. And that just pops in, it doesn't matter which way it goes. You can see this one still actually has a bit of paint on it. But the springs, as far as I can tell, never need replacement. Now this component here, this one, is the main body ring. And this just needs to be screwed all the way around inside here. You can see it's, just pay attention here. That there's actually that screw there that's the main body locking screw as well so this part screws all the way through until it coincides with that hole there which locks it in place so I think these components are brass so they do screw quite nicely what I found best instead of screwdriver just actually use just the needle wrench to screw this all the way through and then what you're looking at underneath you're waiting until the holes line up takes a little while to do this but it is really smooth Now you can just sort of see it starting to come through. Keep working, keep working. Hopefully you can see that. Now I can just see threads. Oh, there, I've got a few more rotations. There she is there, right on the money. Now, this little screw here which locks the body together. I think that, yes, that can go on at this stage now. If you really need to see how this, how it's stripped down, just tell me, I might make a video on it. I don't think it's necessary because these components, you know, pretty straightforward. As long as you have, you know, that exploded diagram is really what helps you and it is quite logical i don't know how the other iwata airbrushes strip down so this is really about this tr series tr1 tr2 they're basically the same body just a few different components this is the 0 0.3 and you can get a 0 0.5 i think you can get a 0 0.2 now so that's starting to, uh, that's, that spring gives the trigger, the feedback. I suppose you could replace it, you could even make it stronger or whatever, but I find it really nicely balanced. Oh, just everything just is so, there's a little bit of play there, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter because 
this is the point where you switch on air and this is the way you control and these parts are just so smooth okay, let's just continue reassembly now next part to go in is where is she this one here this is the uh, this is the needle chucking guide it's the next component to fit in and it simply slots down the bottom of here there is it only fits in one way you see it's got that groove there that cones corresponds with the groove in the previous component so it only goes in one way and then the spring here the spring is the needle spring that just simply clips across there and then i will sort of come across to the final sort of components which is the spring guide press it in a fair way but this only needs to be hand tightened that's all when i was unlocking i did have to use you know my leather man to grip that and just to free it because you know <laughs> it's it's been sort of on there such a long time I've got the, the valve assembly here. This did not need to be stripped, but this is the other component that has got uh, packing and O-rings in it, but we're just concerned with the needle packing. And we're basically together now. The only parts now, this is sort of where you would be on a normal strip down. So needle and I will try to find out if I have some lube as well. What I'm going to have to do is give this a thorough clean out as I'm actually going to spray some solvents through it because I did have to use some release agent. So I have got, you know, WD-40 forward of the, um, the nozzle, etc. That needs to be worked out. So that's your reassembly, and of course, moment of truth now, let's hook it up some air, let's fire something through it and see if we have solved our difficulties. Okay, so we're ready to test the airbrush after the reassembly. We're not going to be testing with paint, we're actually going to be testing with thinner because we have that WD-40 machine oil inside there, we want some of that out, and also we don't really need to paint anything so we're just going to put a few drops of thinner inside there. now the first test hopefully you're going to hear this over the compressor is this trigger the first stage is air it's a two a double action airbrush so the first part of the trigger pull it's just purely air. There should not be any paint or liquid or immediate that comes through on the first trigger area. So that's actually... See that we've just got air. There's nothing else coming out. So that first play, you can actually feel it. It sort of comes up to a stop on the trigger. Only air and there's nothing else feeding back. I haven't got any liquid coming back at this trigger area so we'll just get a piece of paper and we'll just sort of see if the media comes through which it is let's go full blast lay out a lot and the main area is to inspect the trigger area and on both sides there is no leakage whatsoever so it looks like our maintenance is paid off
you know you can you can feel the de the detents really good on these airbrushes. You can, it's quite a quite a pull actually the first stage. It's there, just there. And then the second part is that amount of trigger area there. That's really where you're up against the spring. Nothing, and then spray. Hopefully capturing all that. So repair's good. Hope this video helps you if you've had the misfortune or basically if you've got that area Probably not maybe on this Iwata TR1 series, but it might be your good old faithful airbrush. After 10, 12 years, you get symptoms of flow back. It's more than likely to be the needle packing. And have a look at your own airbrush, have a look at the assembly of it. And you too can probably affect your own repair and maintenance and save yourself a few dollars. So hopefully it's useful. Of course, leave any comments. Hopefully you can subscribe to my channel. Any questions on airbrushing as well, any other videos you want to see, put them down in the comments and hope we can help you. And see you in the next video.